We made it! The time has now come where I finally get to share with you guys how my brother's kitchen turned out. Like all the other parts, we definitely hit some road bumps, and in the last week, we hit some road bumps that changed the entire timeline of this project. Today is literally not our day. But with every major renovation, you're gonna run into problems that are just completely out of your control. Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my channel. We have finally made it through this series of gutting and renovating my brother's kitchen. We have a lot of odds and ends to finish up as well as a few big projects, so you know the drill. Let's head back to my brother's and finish this kitchen. So here is where we left the kitchen. The cabinets were in, the countertops and backsplash were installed. We were so close, yet so far from finishing this renovation. So let's start with a project that you guys have seen in every rendering since part one, and that is the plant wall. Okay, it's happening. So for this plant wall, we started out outside cutting all of the pieces for the plant wall down to size. And since we're at the end of this series of doing all this renovation and projects at my brother's house, I feel like I can finally go into more detail about all the multitasking that was happening. So at the time I was cutting down all of the pieces for the plant stand, I also was cutting down the pieces to build the triple bunk bed for my niece and nephew's bedroom. And at the same time, the guys were inside installing the countertops and backsplash. So I feel like all of this information really helps show how crazy this last week of this renovation was. So when Jordan and Kelsey first started talking to me about their kitchen renovation, my brother had mentioned wanting to do some kind of like cool herb garden, something like that. And that's when I sent him all of the pictures that I used for my slatted wall that I turned into a coat rack and said he should do something like this, but make it a plant wall. They both loved the idea and thought this would add a really cool element to the kitchen. So we played around with a few different placements before landing on the wall that used to have the coffee bar. So Jordan started out taking some one by twos and framing out the whole wall because we needed these boards coming off of the wall just a bit so that we could add baskets for this plant wall. After getting the wall framed out, he took some white paint and painted those boards so that they would blend into the background once we attached the slatted boards. And I was there during this whole process. I was sitting on the ground making a pennant for my niece and nephew's bedroom. So never want you guys to think I was slacking cause I wasn't, I was there. Once the paint was dry, he went ahead and started attaching all of the slatted boards and he used his pneumatic nail guns. So this plant wall was done in no time. The only thing he had to work around was an outlet that is on the wall and a switch that is on the wall. So he cut the boards down to size to work around those two things. And then he also had to cut down a few pieces to put behind those boards so that they would still pop off the wall. And then he finished up this plant wall by staining it. We tested out a few of the stains he already had, but we didn't really like any of them. They all had a bit of a red undertone and we wanted just like a true, like medium brown. So we went with the stain honey. He then took the time to hang and wire in some lights for this wall that he ended up putting some plant light bulbs in. So even on a cloudy day, the plants that are on this wall can still get some light. This was a super quick and easy project, but I think this added just like such a cool element to this space. So unlike the plant wall, this next project was in none of my initial renderings because I didn't know I was gonna do it until two weeks into the renovation. So this project was making a custom channel tufted seat and back cushion for my brother's banquette. And this is the project I got started on while my brother was doing all of the electrical work for his island. So I started off outside cutting down a whole bunch of pieces of plywood. I needed a bunch of 16 by six inch pieces and a bunch of 24 by six inch pieces. Originally, I was going to do a fairly simple upholstered seat cushion. My brother wasn't really on board with the channel tufted seat and back cushion, but I think as the kitchen started to come together, he realized how dope that would look. And then he gave me the green light to go ahead with this project. So the 
process of upholstering the seat and back cushion was the exact same process that I followed to make my channel tufted headboard. But of course there was like a million more pieces to upholster and they were all much smaller. So I started off working on just the seat cushions and getting those all done before I moved on to the back cushions. I got the same full size three inch mattress topper that I've used for a whole bunch of different upholstery projects. This mattress topper is way cheaper than getting foam that is specifically for upholstering. And my brother has done a bit of upholstering for the motorcycles that he builds and he told me to use his electric carving knife to cut through this foam. And this thing was incredible. The second I started using it, I popped online and ordered myself one for all of my future upholstery projects. <laughs> And once all the pieces of foam were cut out, I tacked those to each piece of plywood and then started on the very long process of covering each piece with batting. And while I got to work on that, my brother started to install the last cabinets. Yeah, that's right, we still had more cabinets to install. So the last cabinets that needed to get installed were the cabinets that were above the fridge. We tried to get this done before the backsplash and countertops got installed, but of course we ran into an issue and had to stop until after all of that was done. So the opening where the fridge is in the kitchen is 36 inches wide and the cabinet my brother ordered is 36 inches wide. So this cabinet should have just popped right into place, but of course it was just a bit too big for the space by like literally a centimeter, millimeter, I don't know, I'm not really good with measurements, but it was off by the smallest amount. So my brother took my multi-tool and cut through the corner metal bracket that's in the drywall and also sanded down the wall so that this cabinet would pop into place. So to get this cabinet officially installed, my brother took a two by four, attached it to the wall so that one half of the cabinet could rest on that two by four for the time being while we got it screwed in place. And then the other half of the cabinet I held up. I'm not a very strong human, so I used my head and just kind of popped it up because <laughs> my arms were tired. And once he got those first screws in place and this cabinet didn't need to be held up by me anymore, I went back to covering all of those pieces with batting and my brother used some very questionable techniques to install the second cabinet. And because the ceiling in this area isn't completely flat, there's some bulkheads that come down, my brother had to have the second cabinet shrink down to I think 28 inches wide. So because the second cabinet was shrinking down to 28 inches wide. After he got that installed, he had to do some fancy trim work to make this thing look nice and finish up these last cabinets. So after finishing up the last of the cabinets, my brother got to work on some electrical work and hanging up the hood. Now back to me. Around the time my brother finished up all of the cabinets, I was finishing up covering all of the pieces with batting and I moved on to working with the fabric. And my brother's pneumatic staple gun was a serious game changer for upholstering, so I now need to also add that tool to my get list. But beyond the tools, I think this fabric brings up something interesting that I have never actually talked about in any of my projects. So this fabric is the same fabric that I have used in several different projects. I used this for my channel tufted headboard and I also used this for seat and back cushions for the chairs that are on my screened in patio. So I'm not sure if you can tell in the video, but I'm hoping you can. The fabric that I got for the seat and back cushion at my brother's house came much darker than the fabric I was used to getting. But this just happens to be the dye lot because when they're manufacturing fabric, it's not an exact science. And from dye lot to dye lot, you're gonna have some color variations. I did not realize that. Yeah. Russell, did you realize that? No, I did not realize that. So we just happened to get a dye lot that was a little bit darker. So that's also why whenever I am gonna do a big project like this, I always make sure to order one to two yards more than I think I'm gonna need so that if something goes wrong, I don't have to order more fabric and risk getting a different dye lot and having some different colors. So once I got through all of these standard 16 by six inch pieces, I needed to work on the corner pieces. And originally I wasn't sure what I was going to do and how I was going to nicely 
carry the channel tufting to the back half of the bench. But after playing around with some ideas, I made a template with these triangles that kind of mimicked a starburst design to carry this around the corner to the back half of the bench. And these triangle pieces were the hardest and weirdest shape thing I have ever upholstered. They turned out okay, but I had no idea what I was doing. I kept just pulling the fabric and stapling and pulling the fabric and stapling until it looked halfway decent. So that finished up just the seat cushions. And at this point, it was roughly midnight and I was just gonna power through and try to finish off this bench because we were getting down to the last few days and I just wanted to get this bench done and out of the way. So for the back cushions, I went down to two inch foam so that these back cushions weren't as thick and didn't pop off the wall as much. After cutting down a whole bunch of pieces of foam and tacking that to plywood, I started on the whole process again of covering each piece with batting. Not again. So I got a few of these back pieces covered with batting and I had a weird gut feeling that I should just see how the seat and back cushions were gonna look and how they were gonna work together. And good thing I did trust my gut because basically what happened was having the seat cushion and the back cushion was going to make this bench way too narrow and well basically an adult sitting on this bench would be very uncomfortable because there was just like not enough space to just like comfortably sit on this bench. So I stopped upholstering for the night because my brother and I didn't know what we were going to do. We thought we might have to just scrap the back cushions all together, but we really didn't want to do that. One, because I had already started on the process of making all of them. And two, we just knew it would look really cool once it was done. Guys. Guys, <laughs> I am, <laughs> I don't even know where to start. I literally don't even know where to start. I th think I just have to take you inside and show you what I'm working with. Um, Cause we decided to change up the bench and bump it off the wall. And I thought it wasn't gonna mess up anything. I don't have to luckily redo like the whole seat cushions but I have to redo a lot of them so luckily in a little bit the appliances should be getting delivered today so that's exciting so that's at least something to look forward to that's like super skinny nope that doesn't bug me a bit okay do you will it bug you no I mean I don't think so well okay so my question is do you want a really skinny piece or would you just rather this piece be a little fat I think skinny skinny yep okay we do that. It out. Um, I'm not exactly sure because my brother has to bump this in a little bit, so I'm waiting to see exactly what I have to do. But I think I only have to redo the corner pieces and then potentially this piece, and then we just scooted everything down. And I'm just gonna do a really skinny piece so that I don't have to redo all of these or a bunch of them to adjust the measurements. <laughs> Just not our day today is just not our day um <laughs> so the new refrigerator my brother ordered isn't gonna fit in the space so that didn't get delivered um the oven came damaged so that didn't get delivered so the only thing that got delivered was the dishwasher like the least exciting of the three appliances this is a really fun day 
It's a good day, guys. It's a good day. So this is when I need to inform you guys that we did not finish this kitchen in time. We were very, very, very close, but with the issues with the appliances and those not getting delivered on time, and also the other thing that didn't arrive on time before my sister-in-law got home was all of the open shelving. So those were the two things that we ended up finishing up basically two months later. Uh, so this also explains why I've been a little bit slower to posting these videos because I quite literally have just been waiting for this project to end. Okay, so all of the uh, uniform, like same size pieces are all done. So now I have to focus on working on all of like the unique pieces, like I have to redo the corner pieces and then the upper part of the corner is also going to be thicker. And then over here, I've got to do the skinny piece and then I can start putting all of this together. We're almost there, yay. So I did have to redo all of the corner pieces and I really thought the second time around they were gonna turn out like much nicer. Nope, I'm pretty sure they turned out worse. <laughs> So if you have any pointers on upholstering weird shaped pieces, please let a girl know in the comments down below. I searched and searched and searched online and I found nothing. And all of the other weird shaped pieces were pretty straightforward. They were all rectangle shaped. The measurements were just different than all of the other measurements. So after finally making it through the upholstery process, it was time to put all of these pieces together and install them. So for the back cushions along the main part of the bench, I used two one by fours to attach all the pieces together. And then we were able to use those one by fours and some brackets to attach this to the wall. And then the other little part of the back cushions on the other wall, we couldn't have them coming off the wall that much, so we had to get a little creative. Taking a super thin piece of plywood, I hammered some nails through that plywood, flipped it over, and then used a whole bunch of staples to hold all of these boards together. And then with those nails that were sticking out, I was able to hammer these boards against the wall to hold them in place. <laughs> I just finished upholstering all the pieces for the bench. So we're good, we're good. My brother's about to get home and we're gonna screw everything down. This bench is gonna be done. We made it. And that finished off this very long and time consuming project. But I am so happy with how this bench turned out. This is by far the biggest upholstery project I have ever tackled. And I am super proud of it. And my brother found this awesome solid oak pedestal table from the 70s on Facebook Marketplace. And this table was perfect for the space. But once the cushions were done and installed, we realized pretty quickly that this table needed to be a lot lighter. So in the few months while we waited for the appliances and shelves to get delivered, my brother sanded this thing down and finished the table to be much lighter. So you'll get to see that in all of the final shots in the kitchen. And then it was the last day before my sister-in-law got home. So we had to do all of the like random odds and ends around the kitchen and also around the house. We had to clean, we had to add handles, we had to do some trim work, electrical work, and just try to get this kitchen as done as we possibly could. Okay guys, I just got back to my brother's house. It is now almost two months later since we finished the kitchen. I didn't get here in time, but earlier today, um, the oven and refrigerator did get installed. But now I'm gonna head inside and help my brother pop these shelves up on the wall. And finally, after two months, we are able to officially finish this kitchen. So my brother and I started to install the shelves and we started from the outside bottom shelf, but then I had this profound idea. Sense to just work from the corner, like get the bottom shelf up 
then do the hood and then do this. Mm -hmm, probably. And the shelves that my brother got, I'm not sure why they took so long. My brother ordered them through a shop on Etsy and the date they were supposed to arrive kept getting pushed back and pushed back. He was going to order through a different company, but the shelves were gonna be roughly $2,400, and the shelves he ended up going with were $1,200. And even though he saved some money, we have now talked about it, and he would not go with this shop on Etsy again. The shelves that came, the finish was not good, so he had to completely strip them down and refinish them himself. And then the 260 inch shelves, the bracket that came with them to hang it up is only 20 28 inches wide, so that is less than half the width of the shelf. And with this bracket only being 28 inches, that meant that it only hit one solid stud. And the other parts of the bracket, we had to use a whole bunch of drywall anchors. So had the bracket been a little bit longer, we would have been able to probably screw this into three solid studs and these shelves would feel more stable. So I hate giving bad reviews. This is truly like my first bad review on something, but for $1,200, these shelves were not worth it. So I wanna treat the end of this video like I would any other makeover video where I decorate. You guys get to see my sister-in-law's reaction. And of course, all of the before and afters of this space. But of course, now you guys know that those events didn't take place in the order I was hoping they were going to take place. But hey, I'm really okay with that because this is not a TV show. This is just my brother and I tackling a major renovation by ourselves. And I am super proud of everything we got done before my sister-in-law got home and I'm super happy with how this kitchen turned out. This project, this renovation, this makeover, oh, it was such a learning experience. Some things turned out in our favor by sheer luck and some things we actually caught before it was too late. But I am so proud of my brother and I. We pushed ourselves, we were stressed, and all of that hard work really paid off. And I mean, I could go on and on about the new layout, the design, the vibe in this kitchen, but I really think the before and after shots sum everything up. And also shout out to my sister-in-law, Kelsey, for making that dope painting in the corner by the banquette. So I hope you guys liked this video. As always, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.